Have you ever wondered how some people sound like they have read every single book? How have they had the time to know everything? They probably haven't read them. I'm going to let you into a secret today that I think is the most important thing that you should know before you go to university to study psychology or, to be honest, to study any subject. And that is the secret of the textbooks. Now, you say to me, the secret of the textbooks? Surely uh, that is not a secret. I have been at school for however many years. I know what a textbook is. Well, fair enough. I know you know what a textbook is. But I bet you that most people watching this video have had one textbook per subject. They have had their psychology textbook. They've had their English textbook. They've had their maths textbook and they followed the course of their textbook. Great. But that means that you only know as much as everybody else in your class because everybody's using that textbook because that is the course textbook. Well, I will tell you what I think is the most important thing that you could do for yourself uh, when you're going off to university. This is going to be a big time saver. And I'm not suggesting this so that you are lazy, <laughs> because that is a tendency, it's, it's, it's a temptation, uh, but this is so that you can learn more and then you can read deeper into the areas that you are particularly interested in. And that tip is get another textbook. Get two more textbooks. Get three textbooks. Get a whole handful of textbooks. On the bookshelf behind me, I have got a whole shelf just of psychology textbooks, and they all say something different. Now, there are going to be things which are similar. Obviously, Ash and his line study, it's going to turn up. Milgram and his experimental electric shocks, yeah, they're going to be there. Skinner's going to be in every one of them. Piaget's going to turn up. Of course they are. But it's all the stuff around the edge, the extra stuff which gives depth and nuance. That's going to be different in each textbook. And by being able to dip in and out of multiple textbooks, you're going to get a greater overview of the subject. And then, yes, you are at some point going to have to go to the source and have to read some research yourself. But at least you're going to know what research you want to be re uh, reading. What, what are you interested in actually looking at? I'm going to pull out some of my textbooks. Now, these are textbooks that I used in my undergraduate degree. This shelf here, all of them. Brilliant. There is another shelf uh, down there as well. But these ones got me through. This one in particular, I loved it. I lived with this textbook because nobody else had this textbook, which meant that I knew if I wanted to get something a little bit different, go to this textbook, see what it had to say. This is Gross, uh, Psychology, the Science of Mind and Behavior. I loved it. It is not a pretty textbook. Now, most textbooks, I can't get to that one because it's behind the TV, but most textbooks, big and colourful. They're a bit like the, the high school textbooks. This one, dry, boring to look at, no pictures, just words. But I tell you what, good words, nice words. This had so much good stuff in it. And then you, you, you take what you've got here, you take a reference, you go to the references section, it gives you the exact uh, research uh, journal that it's in, you pick it up, you go to the library and you say, oh, I need to read that piece because I know that that piece is exactly right. In the introduction to that piece, in your literature review, they're going to give you a ton more references. Your essays are going to be loaded up with great references that other people don't have because they're all using the course book. Start with the course book, be aware of the course book, go beyond it. Now, other ones that I would recommend if you're interested in social psychology, this one, Introducing Social Psychology by Fraser and Birchall, I found very useful. Again, not a pretty book, not very many pictures. Uh, but there's a picture, someone with his head in his hand, lovely. This is really good. Um, I actually, uh, I got taught by Brendan Birchall. Uh, I remember his uh, research methods class, Ooh, with a shudder. Uh, so that was a very good book. Uh, Durkin as well, Developmental Social Psychology. If you're interested in the developmental side, which I certainly was, um, then this is a really good one. Uh, language development and other cognitive leaning things as well. And this is something that's, I think, useful to think too, especially if you're doing a course which is accredited. It means that you're going to be doing a different bits of psychology. You're going to do some cognitive, you're going to do some biological, you're going to do developmental, you're going to do social, uh, because in order to get your accreditation, you have to do these, these sections. But sometimes it's worth saying, well, we're studying memory within cognitive or biocog. But I wonder if there's a social perspective on that. 
surely there's got to be a social perspective on memory. And oh wait, of course there is! Social memory's absolutely a, a thing and, and there are so many interesting theories that come into that. Um, and, and one that sort of ties in, you could work with it, is uh, social representations theory and, and how there's social knowledge that doesn't exist within your head, it's, it's actually within society. And then you've made your essay more interesting. Now it doesn't mean you have to agree, you can always put up uh, um, what do they call it? A, it's a straw man? Yeah, I think they call it a straw man. You can put up your straw man to then to then shoot it down. But it gives you something else to, uh, to sort of angle it at. So it's worth looking across different textbooks. A social psychology introduction. This one, this one was very nice. This one, easy peasy to follow. Um, it's by Rudolf Schaffer. Key concepts in developmental psychology. This one's a little bit pretty, I have to say. Um, it's a little bit more modern. Um, and on the side, they, they, they pull out things. It's very quick. So, temperament is the page that I've landed on, and it's got. Let's uh, bring it a little bit forward so you can see what I'm talking about. Can you see that? I don't know. Temperament is the topic, but then it splits it. Meaning, I already know if I just need a definition, I'm going to go straight to this section. Don't need to faff about. Origins, if I want the history and the context, I've got it. Current status, if I just need to know where are we currently at, jump straight to that section and there I'm off and away. This textbook was really very useful for quick essay writing and sometimes you just got to bash them out. Um, this one I was recommended and I have to be honest I didn't use it very much. So most, most textbooks I highly recommend because I love them. They've saved me so much time. This one has sat on the shelf a little bit. It's another Gross one and remember Gross was that one at the beginning that I recommended that is my number one textbook of all time and I absolutely love it. This one, Key Studies in Psychology, didn't really do it for me because I would have preferred to just read the study. Uh, but if you're not that keen on reading the studies at source, maybe this won't be useful for you because what he does is he gives you the background, the context, and then he also gives you some other references at the end. So yeah, he does provide you with a good shortcut. I just didn't find it a very interesting book. Um, but yeah, courses for courses. One other tip, because whilst I think textbooks are pretty good, they're not always very good reads. They're, they're not a sort of bedtime reading sort of thing. And sometimes the information actually goes in better if you're enjoying reading it. So I recommend textbooks for when you're writing an essay. You've got an assignment, you've got to get it in, you've got three days to get it done. How much stuff can you get together in one go? Bish bash bosh, read, 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 absorb, get a few more references, get it down on paper. Fine, really good for a textbook. Sometimes you're gonna to have to remember something for a little bit longer because you've got an exam coming and that is where I actually really recommend pop psychology books. Don't look down on the pop psychology because they're, they're perfect revision for you. Read it in the textbooks, read it at source in the journal articles, revise with interesting books because all of those books that are selling on the, the shelves of bookshops for people who are interested in psychology but not studying it, it's still the same psychology. It's just written in a more easily readable form. Now the thing that you'll miss in, in those sort of pop psychology books is it won't have the format of uh, Fred brackets 1993 brackets blah, blah, blah. It'll just say Researchers at uh, Harvard University found that X, Y, and Z happens. And then you have to go to the back to find out what that exact reference was. But what's really, I find, fulfilling and, and quite encouraging for me when I read these things is if I'm reading a pop psychology book and I know the reference without having to turn to the back, that's when I know, yes, I've learned this. This is coming together now because I'm revising it in each of these books. I know I've learned it, either I've read it in a textbook, I've studied it at source, I've watched a documentary about it. Now I'm reading it in another book and I'm, I'm reading the book and I'm thinking, God, they should really talk about this study that I've come across. It's just such a classic. They've got to call, and here it is. And they don't even mention that it's this study, but I know, and then if I turn to the references, I would know. That is fantastic revision. If you get to that stage, you really know that you're, uh, you're doing well in, in the subject and you've, you've started to really internalize it. And that, 
I think is when you can start to bridge some really interesting gaps. And that's when your essays get really interesting. More so than that, some people watching this video, believe it or not, will actually want to go into become a psychologist or a research psychologist. And these sorts of things allow you to start opening new questions. If you know your stuff so well and you're reading other people's work and you're already starting to feel the argument, then you start to fill the gaps in the argument and that might trigger a really interesting question for your dissertation or for your PhD thesis or for other research too. So read, read, read. Textbooks are my number one for crunching through those essays. But pop psychology books are really an expert resource if you use them well too. Hope this was interesting, hope this inspired you to get reading a bit more about psychology. I don't think you can beat it, it is such an interesting subject and there are a whole host of books to read. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to Psychology Unlocked and that way you'll be notified for all of our upcoming videos, of which there will be many more of the chatting and also more of the curriculum based ones breaking down complex topics within psychology and making them easy to understand. I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.